All right, welcome. In this video, I'm going to explain. Well, first of all, let me say this. I should have done this video a long time ago. I thought there'd be hundreds of them by now. And there's tons of them to show you a lot of trigonometry like this. You might see Sokotoa showing you the tangent signs, so it's sine, cosine, and tangent. But I'm a builder and we want to be able to apply this to building, uh, <clears throat> building something or measuring something in the field. And you could ace trigonometry in school and really not know how to apply it to the physical buildings, right? So physical construction. So I'm going to show you that now. Uh, what I, I just want to start off by saying that initially I learned, uh, I don't know if this is trigonometry, it's geometry. Uh, and uh, it's the rise over run. First time I noticed, uh, I was aware that someone pointed out we were running some sewer lines and they wanted 2% slope and the torpedo level had uh, the bubble and it had a 2% uh, bubble line on it. So that was my first thing that I really realized that there was an actual slope. And then you'll see 2% slope on handicap, uh, on lobbies and areas that, that they want minimum slope. They'll say 2% slope max. And that's just 2% uh, if you've got 100 feet It'd be two percent. It would be two foot, uh, two foot rise over a hundred feet. If it was a hundred inches, it'd be two inches. If, if it was uh, fifty, let's see, VJ point relative fifty, enter, and then point. Uh, it would go tab one, enter, enter. So you'd have one if it was fifty. And I just want to get in real quick, maybe, this is pretty important, right? I don't know if it's actually trig, but you need to know the ratio. So here you're going to use a little algebra. And it's good to have something like this. You know it's 2%. You know that something physically like this is going to be half. The run's going to be half the rise. So there's some algebra that goes involved there, though. So... 2% T, 2%, 2%, T, 2%. That's so weird, right? T. Oh, because it's not the 2%. This program has glitches. Once in a while, it will not recognize. Uh, when you hit T, it should highlight blue automatically, but it doesn't so all the time. So right now, I have to just go up there and put it in the bar so two percent is actually equal to is equal to 0 0.02 if you divide uh, two by two percent it's two per 100 looks like this two two per 100 all right and that's your 2%. This is the same thing. 2% is 0 0.02. If you divide 2 by 100, you'll end up with 0 0.02. Control R. And then we have, uh, let's say you have 27 feet. E, point relative, 27. Enter. And you need to know what's the rise. So what you're going to do is you're going to do the algebra. Uh, and I, I and automatically you just write multiply point zero two t point zero two point zero two times twenty what did we said twenty seven twenty seven enter control C I'm gonna put that in the calculator control V compute V equal copy and just go over there and get rid of that control V. Yeah, that's 27 feet, and we have the point 54. So V point relative tab point zero point. 
And what's going to happen is this is going to be the same angle. It's going to be 2%, 2%, 2%. So if we went over here, we went V, let's do, let's do this, point right up to 27, enter. And then right here along this horizontal line, V, F4, H, the vertical line there. Get rid of that. Trim that, E, H, right? That'll be 0.54 also, right? So it just creates, just, uh, just and that's way of, the way it works. I don't, I don't know. So you could also have 0.54 and you don't know what the, the so if you're, hey, the, we need to know what the slope is there, you'd measure the rise and then the, the, the run here, and then you would just divide the rise by the run. It would give you also 2%. So you could tell somebody there's a way to lay it out and then there's a way to, to measure it. But that's not trigonometry and that's not but it is angles so this is laying out angles it's just laying out angles in uh, percentage form laying out and measuring uh, what a lot of people kind of stop is is they stop there right the, the percent so I'm gonna <clears throat> rise divided by run if you have a Construction Master Pro, you can just, or Construction Master Calculator, type in rise, type in run, and then you hit pitch and it'll tell you the degree. Uh, when we're dealing with, same thing, you could type in uh, the diagonal and the run, and it'll give you the rise and it'll give you the angle. So it's just really all, and then one of the nice things to know about this is if you have the angle, and one side, and you know it's a right triangle, you, it'll, you can calculate the others. You can calculate the rise and the run. If you knew the rise and you knew the angle, you can calculate the diagonal and the run, right? So just need two bits of information, uh, rise and diagonal, or rise and diagonal, and you can calculate the run and the angle. Yeah, so that's a fundamental thing that you kind of need to know. So... Uh, right here, I'm going to go jump to this real quick. Uh, in construction, you'll probably learn pitch, uh, rise and run, uh, and it's usually the rise per foot or inches per foot. So you'd have like a pitch of a roof would be 5 and 12. And when you're building, you would use a framing square, and that's all you would need. And then... You actually have rafter tables. We'll tell you everything you need. It's all based on the 5 and 12, and then the hips are based on 5 and... They have rafter hips, too, like 5 and 17 or something, really, 5 point... or 16.97, uh, something like that. But you have rafter tables. And then you also have framing squares. So if you need to know the angle, you got a 5 and 12 roof, you just put it on there, and it's 5 and 12, and, it, and you can use a speed square for that. If you have... Uh, Let's say five and a half and twelve, you could probably eyeball that and get a pretty good angle. And then, but if you needed a precise precision, uh, an accurate angle, you would need to to do the math. And then that's where this comes in the arc tangent of that angle there. So the rise and the run, you would look at the rise and the run is the tangent. Rise divided by the run is the tangent, and that tangent is. 0.4167. The uh, angle is calculated as the arc tangent of that number right there, or the arc tangent of 5 divided by 12. So here we go. So arc tangent of 5 divided by 12, you could do the math and then you could type the arc tangent in, or you could just do the arc tangent of 5 divided by 12. And it gives you 22.619. That's an accurate angle. And the reason why that matters is because you don't, if you're going to cut something, let's say you have it. So after the rafters tables and stuff, you don't really need it. There's a lot of workarounds. There's a lot of crafts, trade secret, trade tips and techniques that will get you to be able to do those. And you don't need to. You can just use the rafter framing square and do a, pretty much everything you need to do with framing or a roof. If you have a rise, let's say you have a stairs 
and the stairs are 7 and 11, rise of 7 11. There's no rafter table is going to help you there. You really need to use a framing square. And that's fine, except for when you got to put, uh, uh, so let's say you're putting a stringer in the bandsaw, and the bandsaw is in degrees. So you need to convert it into degrees. Uh, you There's workarounds there. You could use templates and things like that, but we really want to be able to just set the angle. And that's how you do it. So you would just say 7. You want to know this angle right here. So I'd be clear out M A. And let me drop that down inside real quick. Control R. So there you go. So there's the angle that we're looking for. The rise divided by the run. It's a little backwards from this one, but it's just flipped. So you need to know that. And then uh so then you could calculate that arc tangent of the rise divided by the run. And then you can get that. And if you if, let's say you had the diagonal and the and the run, you would use run and diagonal, you would just use the cosine. So you would divide the run divided by the diagonal and hit arc cosine. So let's just do that real quick. Let's say we have this Google's calculator eleven. And so we're gonna go A C O S open parenthesis uh, eleven divided by thirteen point zero three eight close parenthesis enter we're going to get uh thirty two point four six eight it's a little different than this because this is not uh extended out real far but point forty six point forty seven you're talking a hundred thirty degree it's like hundredth of a millimeter at a foot so uh let's do this uh click on this Double click on that. Open up the, the tolerance and we'll hit one more zero. Go three eight four. Eleven A A C O C no eleven divided by thirteen point zero three eight four. And then we'll hit that, we'll get them even closer, 32.4712, and it comes out exactly at the right number. So that extra decimal place is a lot, but it's not it's nothing compared to the size of this, right? If you were working on a very large rack, like let's say a very large something very large, your accuracy is gonna go up because the uh ratio uh, it would be fine. So the the it's scalar uh scalable the the amount of air so a hundredth of a millimeter and then you went out but you did it out here it would be uh 13.03 four inches you would actually have more accuracy when you went out and did uh the the longer measurements relative to the air so that way that's how it goes so that's how you calculate the angles. You could use cosine and then sine too. Let's say a common one, right, uh, would be B J H uh, point relative ten, right? Enter. So I know on uh, so if you had something like this, say say you wanted to run thirty degrees, J C thirty kind of cheating because I, I'm putting the angle in, but let's say we wanted that line, right? One that's very common is 30 degrees, and the sine of 30 degrees is 0.5. So if we went with a circle here uh, of 10, and then right here, so that's gonna be the diagonal. Right here we go 0.5, or five, enter. And then we know where those two intersect is 30 degrees out there. Hey, the sign comes into play too. Oh, uh, no, 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 sorry. That, that would be the, it would be this, V, H. So we would run this one out, right, at five. And then this, delete, would be 10. 
for ten B that intersects four four after that's thirty degrees of that A because this is half the diagonal. Not gonna help you that fast, but if you know it exists, you'll learn it somewhere else. All right. So this happened. This is really one of the first times I I understood there was a problem. I needed to know more uh, in laying out a wall that was set out. Actually, I think it said from this line, H. It said thirty, which is the same as sixty from over here. So we're gonna use sixty. Uh, and I knew the wall was forty-one feet long. And I knew this had to be 60 degrees. So you could draw the triangle either way you want. Like this, you can work this angle, out them A. Out them, out them A. So we're looking at that is 60. Sixty or this one here, of them A. K same as that. Thirty or sixty. So let's do this, right? Let's just do sixty since that's what's given to us. And we know the forty one. So let's go to T. So we're gonna use we know if we have this angle and then we're gonna let's figure out this side first so we know that this leg the adjacent leg or the run divided by the the diagonal is the cosine so t cosine of uh, cosine of and we know the angle is 60 is equal to x which is the run divided by diagonal. So if we go take that control C, we go back up here, cosine control V, right? Cosine of 60, cosine of the angle is equal to the run over the diagonal, okay? Control M, Z, and then the run is the unknown, so we're going to turn that uh, control C, control V, we're going to make that X enter. X, because that's pretty much usually how you see it in algebra. Control R, and then we want X by itself, so we're going to take the cosine of 60, we're going to take diagonal, multiply both sides, it cancels out, and then we end up with T, C O S. 60 times diagonal, which is 41. All right, let's take that, copy that, control C, control V, compute, control V equals copy, control V. And then we know this is 20.5, right? So we figured that out. Control R. This one and this one are together. And then, then this one, we want to know this one. This one's X. X. And let's change that to purple. So T. And we know that the Opposite side or the rise divided by the diagonal is the sine T sine of 60 equal to X divided by 41. So there's that T again. Let's go. Control 
let's see. Oh, so we need to clean this. We need to solve for x, and it's the same one. It just gets multi this gets multiplied by the sign. So is equal to x times forty one. And there you go. Control C, Control V. R didn't do it. Yeah, I already did it. So I kind of skipped a step. No, I think I edited it there, right? Equals x divided by 41. And then we use the algebra solve for x, and then we end up with this. We go control C. Tools, Calc, Control V, Compute, Control V equals Copy. There we go. And then that's how you solve for this one, all right? 35.507. And then that's great. So you did the calculation, but you need to lay it out. So, the, so let's just. Imagine this is all gone. Delete. We're trying to lay it out. We know that's on the blueprints, but we need to lay it out. So we know these two numbers. Uh, we calculated these numbers. So what we'll do is we'll go here. We'll draw an arc. Where is that arc? Here? And the point again. I think I can put a radius in there. Specify a radius. I can start here. Specify the radius of uh, 20.5. And I'm going to swing it right here. And this, is, this doesn't exist either, right? You just know that this is a theoretical number here. So all we've done so far, we do have this line. And we've intersected 20.5. We just measured straight down here. We got a 20.5. So scribing an arc isn't really what we're doing, right? Uh, anyways, you take your tape out. You get your intersection point there. Draw a point mark. F4. And let's make that red. And now we know this dimension, right? So now what we can do is we can take this dimension, 35.507, and we can swing that arc. Same thing here. Specify radius of 35.507. From here, and we're just going to swing a, a pretty wide arc. We want to make sure that it's long enough so we, we don't really know where it is, right? Where this line is going to intersect uh, to be perpendicular and the right length. So we make it a little long, longer than it needs to be. It has to meet up. If you do it too short, you might miss it. And then, uh, and then we already know this one's 41. So F3, 41. And we, where that intersects this one. That's our 30 degree angle. So if we draw right here, we know that's 41 F4, F5, F4, enter. So that's our, our wall line. And then we'd offset that wall. I think it was a two foot thick wall. That's how you lay it out. And then, uh, Oh yeah, let's just double check out the MA. You see there's a little bust in the accuracy because this was only carried out to three decimal places. But it's pretty good. I think the accuracy on this thing's way out to 10,000. So if we went out a little higher, you might see a, an error. No, no error. Oh, you know why? Because 41 and 20.5 35.07, surprised that it's so accurate. That usually there's, you'd see some sort of a bust in the, unless it, it maybe that is exactly 
zero 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 you know oh no there you go yeah it's way out there trillion th th billion trillionth of a degree off control z so it's very close to point zero seven five zero point five oh seven Just control r and that's how you would lay it out uh and that's how you do it so i mean if you had a point out here delete let's say draw point mark f4 delete the rest of that delete and then let's say delete delete let's say there's this line and there's there's an imaginary there's a there's a line through here right and you don't know what the angle is, right? So you measure this, measure the, the, the diagonal, and then what you really need to do is you need to sweep, uh, let's draw this circle here. There's some, let's turn off the radius. Let's pick a, a, a swing an arc through this. Right. Pick a number that swings that you hit, you know, like you know this. You can eyeball there's the center. So you put a radius out here, so an arbitrary number. I like to use the even number. So if I was on my tape, I'd say 38. Right. Let's say a 38. Are the wider the better, and then uh, so you just run your tape 38 foot butts into the wall or crosses that line there and there, and then you bisect that uh, with the same same process, right? So we know this is a uh, you measure between those two points, right? And then you get 20.07. So you'd say I'd say uh, I'd go 27 half of 27 13.5. So you go right here. F3. It gives you the, the, uh, the oh yeah, because it's a little bigger. Do that again. How about 14 feet? F3. B, F4, and just snap a line through there. You just bisected that, enter. And you know that's the center, right? Uh, so now you have the diagonal and the run, right, of this angle. And, that, or no, and then you can actually do, so now we've done that, and now you know when you measure here, you're gonna measure right to that point, F4. You won't be at a you won't be at uh so if you were let's say you measured it right here so there's another way you can swing that tape until the tape measure just touches right and it would just touch at the tangent point right there but you might be off by a little bit and you come out with a slightly different answer right if that's a little bit of an angle so that's how you measure an angle uh, I'm sure there's do dozens of different ways, but this gives you an idea how the, the trigonometry is applied to uh, laying out and measuring angles. And I hope that helps you in your career. Thanks for watching.